Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for being here. Welcome to the next video of One Strange Adventure. Uh, this video, well, it's 2020. Some of you guys out there have already started looking at new campers, new RVs. And so um, I thought I'd make a quick video, let you guys know exactly what you need to get started. These are the accessories that you need to buy when you're purchasing a brand new camper. We're gonna break this down into three separate sections. The first being the water, the accessories that you need to make sure that your water is good to go for your camper. Uh, the second part of that is going to be the sewage. We wanna make sure that we have the right accessories for that. The third piece is going to be the power or the electricity. Uh, there are some things that you definitely need to grab while you're in that store. So let's dive into the first one, the water. There are three main accessories that I'm gonna recommend that you pick up while you're in the camping store. Uh, that first one being a drinking water hose. No, don't just grab a regular water hose. That's not going to be uh, good for anyone. Make sure that it is a drinking water hose. I like the G-Force water hose. They actually collapse once the water is out of them and they are super easy to store. They take up very minimal space. Um, those are the water hoses that I actually go with and they are drinking safe. The next thing you're gonna wanna make sure that you get is a pressure regulator. The water pressure is going to vary from campground to campground. You never know what you're going to get. Um, so you wanna make sure that you have a way to control the amount of pressure that's going into your camper. There's a variety of water regulators. There are some that you can control the pressure on and then there are some that are fixed. I actually just use a fixed one because it works for me we get great water pressure in our camper and we don't have to worry about it. So the third thing you're gonna to wanna to pick up is a water filter. That, that ensures that you're not getting any particles or anything like that actually going into your water system, your water lines uh, in your camper. Make sure you have a water filter. I've seen some campers actually out there without, um, without water filters in the water hose line. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I don't know about you, but I don't wanna drink the water that's coming out of these campsites uh, in some locations and so, making sure that you have a really good water filter uh, is key. Now these three items are going to run you about 70 bucks. The next category we're gonna uh, jump into is the sewage. And so look, it's a crappy job, we know, huh? dad joke. Nobody wants, nobody likes it, right? It's the worst part of RVing in my opinion. And so, but you have to do it. And so we wanna make sure that we have the right tools and accessories uh, to make sure that it is as clean and sanitary as possible. Uh, so there are a couple of items that you're going to wanna make sure that you pick up while you're in the store. The first one being a sewage hose kit. And I recommend the kit rather than piecing it all together because what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a hose in addition to the connectors. And so there are a couple of different fittings that you're gonna need uh, depending on what campsite you're on. And so some of them have like where you can screw it in um, at the end of the sewage hose. And then some of them you have to just kind of sit into a donut. Uh, so that's why I always recommend just go ahead and get a kit, make sure that you have everything uh, right there. The other thing is, is if the kit doesn't come with a clear uh, connector. And so I like to put that between the camper and the hose itself. And that allows me some visibility into it, uh, once the water starts coming out clear again. So I can know that when I'm flushing my tanks uh, that I've done a good job. So the next couple of items are actually gonna seem kind of obvious. Uh, one, you're gonna want a box of rubber gloves because nobody wants to touch that and make sure you throw them away, be sanitary about it. I even keep some hand sanitizer uh, in the compartment underneath the camper so that when I'm done, I take my gloves off, get a little hand sanitizer and I'm good to go. Uh, the next thing is you're gonna want some RV toilet paper. And yes, it is obvious everybody needs toilet paper, but uh, RV toilet paper actually has it to where uh, it breaks down much quicker. And if you use regular toilet paper in your camper, you run the risk of that toilet paper actually getting caught up on the sensors. Uh, and then you will get inaccurate readings of how full your tank is. And then that can lead to other issues that you don't wanna have to deal with while you're out camping. I make sure that the camper is stocked with RV toilet paper. Uh, sometimes the it will come with the new camper and sometimes it doesn't. I would just go ahead and pick up a pack anyways. 
The next thing you're gonna to wanna to get is make sure you pick up some black tank pods. And so these are the, the little pods that you drop down into the black tank at once you're done flushing it out. Um, and then you put about two gallons of water in there with it and that will keep everything uh, smelling nice. And so make sure you pick up some of those while you're there as well. These accessories for the sewage is going to run you about 60 bucks. Uh, so it can get costly and I wanna make sure that you're prepared uh, for that going into this experience. The third and final category is going to be the power or the electricity for your RV. Now, there are three accessories here that I'm going to call out and give you a little bit of information on. The first one being a surge protector. Make sure that you are picking up a surge protector. It needs to go between your camper and the power pole at the campsites. The last thing you want is to be out there and for your camper to get a surge and you lose all electricity or take a chance of damaging the camper even further. Uh, so make sure that you get a surge protector. If somebody tells you you don't need one, don't listen, grab one. The price is gonna depend on whether or not you have a camper that runs off of 30 amp um, or 50 amp. And so a 50 amp uh, surge protector is going to cost a little bit more. Uh, in addition to that, there are different types of surge protectors that you can get. Uh, some of them go uh, a little bit more in depth in terms of like uh, the test that it runs and things like that before it allows any current to go to your camper. Uh, those are great. I don't actually use those. I make sure that I plug it in. Uh, I, the little lights on the front say you're good to go and then I plug my camper up. Now the next two items are going to be uh, things that you will want to have. And if you don't get them right away, uh, you may wanna think about it uh, before you go out on your camping trips. And so the first one being an extension cord. I can't tell you how many times I've needed an extension cord uh, for my camper's main power cord. It may not seem like a big thing, but I would hate for you to get to a campsite uh, back in there, get it all set up, and then realize the cord that comes with the camper isn't long enough. Now, the last piece of equipment that I'm gonna say you're gonna need, um, while it's not required, is definitely uh, very helpful to have. And so, not every campsite is going to have 50 amp um, hookups. And some that have 50 amp hookups aren't gonna necessarily have 30 amp hookups. And so sometimes you could be booking a campsite where they only have one or two spots left and it doesn't have the right power connection for your camper. And so what you're gonna to wanna to pick up is either a 30 to 50 or a 50 to 30 amp converter. They're about 15 bucks, so it's not a huge investment, but it allows you to make sure that you can use your camper in pretty much any space. And so that has been very helpful for us uh, particularly since we just bought this grand design reflection and it runs off of 50 amp. It is a larger RV and so most of those sites do have 50 amp, but if we ever come across the situation where we need 30 or we can only run off of 30, uh, we do have that converter to use. So out of all of these categories, the power is actually gonna probably cost you the most. Um, if you're a 30 amp, you're probably going to look to spend about 120 bucks um, on these accessories. If you have a 50 amp uh, RV, you're going to spend about $230. And so there's a significant increase if you're going to a camper that has a 50 amp uh, hookup. All right, so let's recap. You need a couple of things for your water. You want to make sure that you have a drinking hose, a filter, and a pressure regulator. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a couple things for sewage. You want the hose with all its connections, some rubber gloves, some pods that go into the toilets inside, and make sure that you have RV toilet paper. The last thing is gonna be the electricity. You wanna make sure that you get an extension cord, a surge protector, and some type of 30 to 50 or 50 to 30 converter, uh, depending on the type of camper that you have. So. If you're looking to just buy a new camper or you're getting ready to buy a new camper, uh, these are costs that you need to make sure that you're taking in consideration. For a 30 amp, you're gonna spend about $250 in the store. And that's just the kind of the bare minimum, uh, depending on if you pick up the extension cord or the uh, converter, it may be a little bit less. For a 50 amp, you're gonna spend about $365. And so depending on what camper you have, you're ranging from about 260 to about 360. So that's not a ton of money when you think about the investment that you're making in your new camper. That is a cost that you need to make sure that you're prepared to uh, pay. 
Now I've actually made a list on Amazon uh, of all of these items. And so you can go in there. I will add the link to the description. You can go into that list and check out all of the items that I've talked about today. Um, I've also added my favorite uh, brands and types that I use. And that is what I used to base the pricing off of today as well. All right, well, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you really like the video, make sure you subscribe. And until the next strange adventure, keep making your own.